Hi, my name is Land, and today we'll be talking about the scuba requirements that you'll need to know as a pilot. Every pilot has to know or memorize or learn and know and uh, the scuba requirements um, for flying, right? Uh, it's one of the most commonly que asked questions on a check ride or a stage check even is, okay, you go scuba diving, what are the requirements? How long do you have to wait after until you can go flying? We're pilots. When we go up in the air, the atmosphere gets thinner and thinner and thinner, right? Remember hypoxia, hypoxic hypoxia. The opposite is true when you go deep into water. So scuba diving, for every roughly 17 feet down, pressure on your body, meaning the, pre the, compression, the compressive pressure of the water on your body goes up by about one atmosphere. So 17 feet down, it feels, you feel one atmosphere of compression. Another uh, 17 feet down, you feel two atmospheres. So the further the further you go down, the more compression effect there is on your body. What that causes is any gases that are in your blood vessels, oxygen, get pushed further and further and further into your muscles and your bones. What are you breathing down there? You've got a big old scuba tank on your back. The air that is in that scuba tank is compressed ambient air. So if you remember from our previous talk, the atmosphere is made up of 75, 80% nitrogen, and 15, 17% oxygen, and the rest carbon dioxide, argon, whatever. That 75 to 80% nitrogen is now compressed into a oxygen tank. So as you are down at depth, the oxygen that you're breathing and that's, that nitrogen is getting pushed further and further and further away uh, into your body. Okay, fine, you're down there, you're having a good time, you're floating, you're seeing all the pretty fishies and enjoying yourself, so now it's time to ascend. Um, if you do it too rapidly, the gases don't have time to outgas from your organs or from your blood vessels. They start to expand a little bit and then they expand more and they expand more as you go up. Now, imagine if you didn't have, uh, if those gases were still stuck there when you take off in an airplane. Now, you're, you're, the pressure outside is less and less and less and now this, this little nitrogen bubble expands to a level to cause severe pain or sometimes even death if it's caught in a blood vessel uh, in the brain. So. The rules are, if you go scuba diving and you do an uncontrolled ascent, you should wait 12 hours uh, to outgas the nitrogen that's stuck in there before you go flying. There, in the scuba diving world, there are uh, things called compression stops or decompression stops. Uh, so that means that if you go down low enough, every, as you ascend, every, let's call it 20 or 30 feet, you should stop there hover around there for about 10 or 15 minutes and outgas the nitrogen, right? Breathe out the nitrogen that's that you accumulated at depth. So then you go another 20 or 30 feet and stay there for about 15 minutes to breathe out that nitrogen. So those are called controlled ascents. And if you do a controlled ascent or if your dive requires a controlled ascent or if you're going into or going to be flying in, in an airplane that has a cabin pressure altitude of 8,000 feet, which a lot of airline, that's what a lot of airliners cabin pressure out, uh, cabins are pressurized to, then you need to wait 24 hours. So the recommendations are 12 hours if you have an uncontrolled ascent, and uncontrolled sounds worse than a controlled ascent, but uncontrolled ascent just means that you go from depth to the surface and don't need to stop because you didn't go deep enough or 24 hours if you've gone deep enough to make a controlled ascent, right? Or if the cabin pressure altitude of your aircraft go is about 8,000 feet, then you need to wait 24 hours. So those are the scuba rules that you need to know as a pilot. Uh, so if you guys have any questions about this or anything related to aviation, please leave a comment down below and we'll be sure to get back to you.